Let's take a look at the input object properties. I'm going to double click on my input object. As you can see here, there's some special stuff in the settings tab that we're not used to. First of all, let's start with the actions tab though. As you can see, there's an on key event and an on focus event. On focus is when the focus goes to an object. For example, when you click inside an object. On key is when somebody presses one of the keys. Okay? So these are the two events that you can use to trigger actions for this particular object. In the attributes tab, we've got the typical stuff that we're used to. We can set the size and the position numerically. Again, we've got the ability to name our object and toggle the enabled and visible states here in the properties area. And we've got our tooltip with the spell check. So this is the normal stuff that we've come to expect from our objects. In the settings tab, this is where the input object is a little bit different. Here you've got a chance to set your initial text of your object. Okay, now I'm going to jump ahead down here and show the read-only toggle at this point because in some situations you're going to be using an input object actually to uh, format data or to display data in certain situations where you don't actually want the person to be able to type into that line and that's what this read-only function is for and in those applications your, your initial text here might be very important okay so I don't want to overemphasize that but I just wanted to point that out anyhow you can set your initial text here by typing something into the text field and here you have the ability to set the color set the font and check your spelling as you would with any text application within one of our objects here's where things get a little bit special in the input object you've got a chance to mask your input so for example here we've got the standard input style we've got the password style and that's where people who are onlooking cannot see the input that somebody puts into that field it gets masked as they type it in and you've probably seen this before typically at a logon area of a website a secure website and in the input mask area here we've got an options tab and this is where it gets really special so let's go ahead and click on this options button and as you'll see here we're provided with a bunch of built-in input masks which you, could, which you can use immediately for example the first one is a mask for a credit card number uh, the third one here is a mask for a phone number and so forth here the fourth one is a mask for a date in a certain format and you can basically create your own masks here using number signs and hyphens and slashes and so forth to create any type of input mask you want for example we'll select the telephone number input mask in this particular case you also have an option to set your own placeholder and return the data that the user inputs as formatted or as typed so you can return it as they typed it or format it according to your mask so this is pretty handy this allows you to apply some very powerful settings to your input objects. I'm going to press OK. I'll leave mine set to standard for now though. OK, so moving along, you can see in the multi-lined area here that we've got a variety of options available for a multi-line functionality. For example, when the user is going to be providing an input which is going to exceed the size of the input object. So this would be provided for better usability or readability typically. So you can enable that by clicking the enabled function here. Once it's enabled, you have a couple options available to you. You can set the vertical and horizontal scroll bars to be functional or non-functional. And this is basically going to do the same thing that you would expect from a web browser or a paragraph object. It's going to create scroll bars when the content exceeds the size of the object. I'm going to go ahead and leave that by default disabled. Here we have some border options and some background options. We can set the background color of our input object here simply by choosing a color from these color chips and we can set the border mode to none flat or sunken so sunken is this typical uh, default look that you get here um, that's typical to web browser components for example flat is just a straight flat stroke border so for example if we choose flat we'll just get a one pixel border all the way around our object none puts absolutely no border at all on your input object this can get kind of confusing depending on how you have your layout set out, so we usually leave this set to sunken. It's what people are used to. The read order allows you to change the read order from left to right to right to left if, if you need that for a certain application. Typically, we just leave this on standard though. And of course, we've got the alignment functions as we would have with, an, with any, say, label or text object. Okay, so let's go ahead and press OK. Those are the properties that go with the input object. And in the next tutorial, we'll take a look at some of the actions.